So this is going to be um, a lab practical review for lab practical two. The first section I'm doing is protists. I apologize if there's some music in the background. They're doing the crawfish boil in the courtyard or on the quad, so um, hopefully it won't be too loud. Uh, the way I've set this up is with the PowerPoint, and I'm going through the organisms in the order that they're on your list that you got uh, as a packet in class. And so if you wanted to try to jump ahead, you could kind of guess where you might want to go. Okay. So overall, if you remember, the kinds of things we need to know for protists are the name of the organism, where it's found, um, and I'll go over the ones you need to know for that. Just saying water is it's not sufficient. It needs to be things about cold water or warm water, things like that, salt water. Economic importance, ecological importance, along the lines of ecological importance, if or economic really, if it's parasite to humans, what vector carries it, um, and what disease does it cause. And structures, I'm going to go through a couple of those. They're told to label most of the structures that you'd need to know. If I mention any other ones, then they'd be important as well. And then products produced or used, which are along the lines of uh, economic as well. Okay, so let's look at the amoeba proteus first. You can see here um, that it is a unicont, which means it's in the same supergroup that humans are in, actually, animals. It's an amoebazoan, though, so it's on a different branch of that. It's found in uh, water. This one doesn't really matter. Um, fresh water, and uh, so really we're going to go for the structures for the amoeba. So let's jump to that. Um, you see here, these are the pseudopodia, so you'd need to know those are those uh, extensions of the plasma membrane that allow the protist to move and to catch its food through phagocytosis. So it would take its pseudopodia, surround the food, basically fuse them together and engulf the food through a um, a food vacuole, which is what this part is, these little guys here. So there's food inside those that's being digested by lysosome organelles. Um, and here was the nucleus, so that's the dark spot, the larger dark spot in the organism. Uh, ecologically, these guys are uh, consumers, the primary consumers, so they're kind of the first level after the uh, bacteria and algae, so they're the ones that would eat those. Remember, algae is just a general name for different types of protists that are photosynthetic. The second group we have is the radiolarians. So these guys are rhizaria, and if we think about the rhizaria and what that means, remember, those guys have very specific structures. Can't really see them on here, but what they have through the holes in their skeleton are uh, filament or thread-like pseudopodia. So this amoeba has lobe-like pseudopodia. These guys would have threads. So the thread-like pseudopodia are in Rosaria. Radiolarians, the only kind of name you need to know for this. Um, besides the pseudopodia, they also have, you can see the skeletal structure here. Uh, it's made of silica. It's actually an internal skeleton. But it is a hydrated silica, silica dioxide. And ecologically, um, they make, on the bottom of the ocean when they die, they sink to the bottom, and they basically pile up into what we call radiolarian ooze. Um, I don't really know of an economic importance of that uh, per se, but the, that is something I know that they contribute to in the uh, ecosystem, is this radiolarian ooze at the bottom of the ocean. Mostly the structures are important for this one. Then we have euglena. So euglena is special ecologically because it can do photosynthesis and cellular, or photosynthesis and um, eat, ingest. So it's what we call a mixotroph, autotrophic and heterotrophic. So we call it mixotroph. It has some structures. Oh, I guess this got, oh no. Uh, it does have a flagellum. You can't see it on this picture. That's how it would move. Swim around to hunt at nighttime. 
You can't see the chloroplasts, but there are some in here to do photosynthesis. That's the nucleus. And they're pretty small. Um, small, little kind of oblong looking organisms. Then we start with the uh, disease causing. And these are going to be important that you know the diseases and who carries it uh, and parts of these organisms. So, Trypanosoma is the genus. Uh, Brucie is the species. So, Trypanosoma brucie causes um, sleeping sickness. Sometimes it's called African sleeping sickness. You might also have seen these words on the slide, Gambienze or Rhodesienze, though that's just a subspecies, so it'll be like Trypanosoma brucie Gambiziense. You don't need to know those. Basically, it's just Gambia, West, Rhodesia, East, you know, old names for uh, countries. So what you're looking for here is like a ribbon kind of looking protist. There's the nucleus. It has a flagellum. So that's an important structure there. Um, it has uh, a membrane here. You can see that here, kind of a wiggly membrane. And then we also have these structures all around it, which are red blood cells. So that basically tells you that these trypanosoma, in this case, this stage of their life, are living in the bloodstream. So... The um, disease, like I said, is sleeping sickness. It's a, a neuronal disease. And the vector that carries it is called a tsetse fly. So that's T-S-E, T-S-E fly. And we see this in Africa. Uh, economically, the disease is the importance, and structurally, we went over that. Uh, I just wanted to show you real quick this trypanosoma moving, so that could help you remember what it looks like. See its flagella and its wiggly membrane. So those are trypanosoma. And you can think soma kind of mean, it means sleeping, sort of. Like, um, uh, I can't think of the word right now, but it, it, like, yeah, so soma is sleeping. You can think of it like that. And here's some interesting things about um, if you want to go to there to talk about the parasites and their life cycle and stuff like that. But that would be for your own benefit. The second group of uh, organisms that cause diseases are in the genus Plasmodium. So Plasmodium, uh, where it's found, we'd find it in uh, two places, in mosquitoes. And specifically, we find it in this genus of mosquito. You'll need to know this, the Anopheles mosquito. So half of its life, it spends in the Anopheles mosquito, the vector. Then the Anopheles mosquito can bite a human and transfer it to the human, where it lives in the liver for a while, and then the blood. There are a number of plasmodia that cause... Uh, malaria, so this is the malaria. And remember, malaria is the disease that's protected against by being heterozygous for the sickle cell allele. Um, disease vector, uh, so that Anopheles mosquito, uh, structurally, we have a couple different types of cells, so let me show you this. Um, we'll have cells that are pretty much all full of, this is a red blood cell, by the way. These are red blood cells that are infected. This one's infected. And it's full of um, plasmodium, so those are called schizonts. This is a specific species, vivax, so plasmodium vivax is a frequently discussed malaria-causing um, protist. We also have, basically, the schizont uh, explodes and releases all these individual cells called merozoites. 
And those cells can go and infect other red blood cells. So it kind of reminds me of a virus, but it's actually a, a eukaryote, a living organism of cells. Uh, so those merozoites are important. And then in earlier stages, uh, when it's not fully um, uh, filling up the red blood cell, the plasmodium would be a trophozoite. It's one of the stages there. Okay. And here's another picture. You'd have white blood cells, red blood cells, and infected red blood cells with the plasmodium. So, right, so that they talk about this here, trophozoites to, schizos, to schizonts to merozoites. And this is a whole big explanation of this life cycle. If you wanted to uh, pair those up, this is what we're looking at here in those pictures. So here's the trophozoite, here's the schizont, and then these ruptured, those would be the, mer uh, the merozoites. Okay. Anopheles mosquito malaria. Then we have Giardia. So Giardia is um, the phylum, excuse me, the genus. So Giardia is the genus, and Intestinalis is the species. So Giardia causes giardiasis. That's the real word for the Giardia infection. These are all protists, remember. They're parasitic protists. Uh, sometimes it's called beaver fever or backpacker's diarrhea. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and so what happens here is the giardia is uh, passed from an infected person through, or infected organism, through the feces to another organism. So and they get in these cyst forms so they can survive a really long time, even not in a host. Kind of reminds me of a bacterial endospore. Uh, it's a intestinal. They live in the intestine of mammals. Chronic diarrhea is the problem. Geodiasis. Uh, if we look at where you'd get it from, uh, water, you can see it's in the water, which is not surprising because that's where protists live for the most part, um, but particularly untreated water or um, water in lakes, rivers, streams, springs, and ponds. So we think of frequently in streams. So this is the one where it's like you're walking along, backpacking, hiking, and you decide to drink some of the water out of this beautiful crystal clear stream and you get really ill. What could have happened is that there's different forms that can infect humans and you can see they can also infect other organisms, particularly the beavers we think about in the wild. And so those beavers, um, their feces get in the water, their cysts are in the feces, the cysts get ingested by you and then you get geodiasis. But you can also get it from uh, be working in childcare or your children being there because there is a lot of feces with the babies and the diapers um, or traveling. So the Giardia intestinalis looks like, oh, here's its uh, cycle. Uh, it looks like this. So there's trophozoites. Those are like the swimming guys and cysts, which are the dormant phase. The trophozoite looks sort of like a teardrop or a pear. <clears throat> Sometimes you can see the two um, nuclei. They look like eyes, but they're nuclei. There is also a flagellum. I can't see them in these pictures. I also don't think on our slides you can see them very clearly, but you can see or we'll get a specimen that you can see the nuclei. So there's two in the trophozoid, the cysts have two to four. But here you can see these two. Here you can see 
two, or three. And you also see this line down the middle a lot. So that's something I look for, the line down the middle. And then the multiple nuclei. You don't need to know the difference between cysts and trophozoites. I just wanted to show you why they might look different. So those are all our protists that are either mixotrophic or um, heterotrophic, meaning they have to get their food, their carbon, from an outside source. Then we're going to talk about algae, which is just a name for autotrophic or photosynthetic uh, protists. And I'm actually going to stop and start a new um, segment in case you just wanted to listen to one or the other.